Good morning everyone on this wonderful Easter morning, a day when we celebrate the risen Christ. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us come together and worship God as we sing the hymn, He has risen. That wonderful lively chorus, let's begin to worship God. the champion of our faith.
Shall we pray? As we lift our praises to you today, we remember the victory you won on the cross, a victory over death and sin. And so we thank you, Lord, for the freedom that that brings to our life. And in this freedom, we want to live our lives dedicated to you, to love in the way you loved, to walk in peace and contentment in the way you did, to express the joy of a living relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We praise and worship you because you are almighty God. You have created wonderful things in this world for us to enjoy and delight in. Today we thank you for the joy in our hearts as we reflect on the way you work salvation for us. We also come before you to express our sorrow that we have not always acknowledged your victory on the cross, that sometimes we live our lives with little consideration to your will and your presence. Forgive us for the times when people have hurt us and we have wanted to retaliate. We thank you that you are a loving God, always willing to forgive. And so we are sorry for our sin and ask your forgiveness, knowing that if you, we are truly sorry, you will cleanse us from all our sin. Amen. And now shall we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we will have our first reading, which is from John chapter 20, which Cathy will read. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. She came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken my Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started to the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. We will now sing our next hymn, Low in the Grave He Lay, a song of victory.
after that wonderful hymn, shall we now have our offering. We can't actually take an offering today, but because it's Easter Sunday, let us reflect on what God has done for us and return love and worship God and serve others. We can never possibly repay God, but we can show our gratitude for what he has done. And now our second reading, which is the follow on from the first, uh, which Kathy will read as well. And this reading is entitled, Jesus Appears to Mary Magdalene. Now Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbanai, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. We will now sing the next hymn, See What a Morning. It captures the mood brilliantly with its stirring music and the story of the resurrection.
The hymn See What a Morning is a tremendous song of celebration. It expresses the joyous praise that we Christians can sing today as we remember and celebrate that first Easter morning. But it wasn't like that for the disciples. They probably had sleepless nights and an anxious day. So when Mary Magdalene got up early on Sunday morning, the day after the Jewish Sabbath, she started to make her way to the tomb. Her heart was far from rejoicing. She was mourning the death of a beloved teacher. When she got to the tomb, she thought that something terrible had happened. The stone to the entrance of a tomb had been rolled away. Was it the act of grave robbers? Or was it the authorities that had taken the body away? In a panic, she went for help. Mary goes off to find Peter and John, and they accompany her back to the tomb. When they get there, it is Peter who enters the tomb first. He looked around at the empty tomb. He saw the grave clothes placed on one side and seems unmoved. Maybe for Peter, there's a sense of even if Jesus is alive, then it won't make any difference to him because why would Jesus want a friend like Peter, someone who disowned him in his hour of need? The gospel says that John went into the tomb, looked at the grave clothes and believed. It is remarkable that with so little evidence, John can believe that Jesus has risen from the dead. He doesn't give any indication that he expressed any emotion at this point. He perhaps went away and thought about what he'd seen. Maybe he was still trying to understand. John obviously had a strong faith, which would help him in the many years to come. The two disciples left Mary at the tomb. She began to weep. It was too much for her to cope with now that the body of Jesus had been taken away. She looked into the tomb again, but this time saw two angels. They asked Mary a question, because, but she could only focus on the loss of the body of Jesus. Even when she sees Jesus before her, she does not recognize him, but thinks he is the gardener. I'm sure we have had times where we have faced insurmountable problems and we only focus on the problems and not on what's happening around us. Mary is grieving and even the angels appearing and Jesus himself standing before her cannot startle her from a preoccupation with the loss of Jesus' body. God sometimes tries to get our attention in difficult circumstances and we seem oblivious to his presence. Let us remember that God is always with us, wanting to help us no matter what situation that we face. Jesus breaks into Mary's subconsciousness with just one word, Mary. It wasn't just the name being said, it was the way Jesus said it. The tone of voice, the inflection. Only Jesus said her name in that way. Suddenly Mary's mind was in confusion. The reality of the crucifixion made her mind numb. She had seen her precious Lord die, and yet she recognised his voice. She looked up to see that it was Jesus, and she responded in her usual manner, Rabboni. It was love that compelled her to go to the tomb that first Easter morning, but it was her faith and dedication and devotion that were rewarded. 
with an encounter with Jesus. God wants to speak to us, perhaps giving us a gentle nudge or challenging us to completely change our life. For the three disciples we have spoken about, their encounters with the risen Lord were all different and their expression of faith were different too. But for all three, their lives were changed dramatically. Each would serve God in their own way, with their talents and abilities, their personalities, and the Holy Spirit inspiring them to greater things. Which disciple do you feel closest to in the resurrection story? Or perhaps it is a mixture of all three, because we all experience and serve God in our own unique way. Amen. And now we sing a song which speaks of Jesus' complete victory over death and sin. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah.
after that wonderful hymn, we turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. In a day where we rejoice that our Saviour has risen from the dead and that he has overcome the powers of evil, we continue on our journey of faith knowing that God is always with us. In these strange times, we think of our brothers and sisters in the faith who cannot stand alongside us to worship you, and yet our love and devotion are not diminished by the restrictions which are placed upon us. We are church, even though we worship separately in our own homes. We pray today for people who are anxious and fearful, touch their lives in such a way that they will find real courage with faith in you. We pray for all the NHS staff, especially those on the front line. We ask for your protection on them and their families. We pray that doctors and nurses will receive the right equipment to keep them safe. We pray for others who supply our needs in so many different ways. Lord, protect them as they go about their daily business. We thank you for our police force and the army, which are playing an important role in our society today. We pray also for those who have the coronavirus, that you will lay your hand upon them and bring healing and wholeness to their lives. We also pray for those who have lost loved ones. Comfort them by your spirit. May they know that you are with them. Finally, we pray for our Queen, that you will protect her and her family. And we pray also for Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, that you will work in his life to bring about healing and wholeness. In Jesus' name we ask these prayers. Amen. Our closing hymn is a hymn of praise and worship to our all-conquering God. Thine be the glory, risen conquering Son.
And so after that wonderful hymn, we say the blessing, which you may want to say with me. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us forevermore. Amen.